Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gingrass. Today, we're going to talk about the separate function using the tidy methods, so using the tidy verse. If you haven't seen the first tutorial, or the previous one, I should say, about the tidy verse and separate function, uh, just click the link. I'll put a little link somewhere, info thing, and click that, and you should be good to go. Or follow along. We should be good. Today, we're going to learn a little bit more about the separate function, but we're also going to learn the unite function. Uh, basic stuff. But here we go. So if you don't have this code already up, you might want to pause it and write this code down. So we have our library tidyverse already loaded. And let me just clear that. And so we have a tribble. Well, we have a tibble that's created using the tribble. Remember, the tribble is just an initiation function for a tibble, which is basically a data frame. So let's load these up. I'm going to load one and three so we have it. And I'll click on th this people tibble, which is like a data frame, we have one column and it's called name. And of course I have names in there. My name, Dave Smith, Jackie Doe. Okay. So what we want to do is separate those out into first and last name. Now I showed you the other day how to do this. So I have right here, I'm just storing it into people too, but we'll, yeah, we'll keep it as people too. But what I'm doing is I'm taking this people data, right? This tibble, I'm going to pipe it into the separate function. By default, the first parameter that goes in is the people. So separate actually does take in a data set. But because I'm using the pipe operator, it knows that people is my first parameter. So the first uh, parameter I have here is name, which aligns with the first column of my tibble. Name, Mark Gingras, Dave Smith, Jackie Doe. Right? I want to convert that. I'm going to separate it out into two pieces, first name and last name. So name into equals and then a vector of first and last name. And I say the separate symbol that you're looking for is a space bar. So I put a space in there. No problem. So let's just run that. Now we're back up to speed from last video and click on people two. And we have first and last name. Let me show you a couple other things real quick. Um, what if I didn't want to get rid of name? I don't have to do that. What I can do is I can add another parameter called remove equals and I can put false. It's by default true, but you can also put, you can explicitly say true. But if I do false, let me run this again. Now, when we look at people two, we have name first and last. Pretty cool. So we don't have to get rid of the first um, column name if we don't want to. All we have to do is add that parameter called remove equals true, uh, false. Okay, now one more thing with separate. Let's say we wanted to separate a um, certain amount of letters instead of um, looking for a symbol like a space. It doesn't have to be a symbol. It could be any actual regular expression, honestly, in the separate parameter here. Um, but we happen to put space, but we can also put an actual just a fixed number of digits or characters or whatever you want to call it, right? So we'll do passwords, right? Passwords is equal to, let's say you're going to create a new password for a new user of some system and you want to auto generate it, then they log in and then they can change their password, right? So that's the hypothetical. So we're going to take the people too, which has name first, last, and that's it. In fact, yeah, that's good. Um, so we're going to take people too, we're going to pipe that into another separate function. So we separate that. And what do we want to separate this time? Let's make our password generator to be the first three letters of the uh, first name, right? So we can do that multiple ways, of course, but we can just say bring in the first name and I'm going to say convert that into a password. So in fact, let's just call it password. And then we're going to make our separate equals instead of a string, we just put in the letter or the number three. And of course, I'm going to do remove equals false on this one as well because I don't want to remove the first name and replace it that way. So I'm just going to run that. So now we have the passwords here, which actually contains everything. So I've recreated the whole data set. But as you can see, I have a column called password and it has the first three letters. What if I wanted everything but the last three letters or the last four letters, right? Or the flash five? Well, we can always just start from the right and remove letters so we can put a negative in there. I'm going to redo this one on passwords and we'll pretend that the password is everything but the last three characters. So I'm going to rerun passwords with the negative three in there. And we will click on it. So passwords should be, if you look at password, we have M, D, and Jack. Remember, it's the first name only. So there's only so many letters in my name. It removed the first three letters. I mean, the last three letters, A, R, and K, and it just kept it the M. So that is one way to do it. 
Now, let's do a unite function and go from there. What we want to do is instead of separating this, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. I'm going to do con control or command shift C and that comments that line out. And I will also comment this line out. Command shift C. Let's rerun our uh, we don't actually have to rerun it because we still have the people data frame here. March Ingress, Dave Smith, Jackie Joe. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's not let's not comment this out. Let's just run this one more time. Sorry, we're back on the same page. People two. Look at the people two data set. It has first and last name and it has name. But what I wanted to do was actually say remove equals true. I am so sorry. Uh, that takes me a minute. Boom, run that again, people equals true, because I want to give you the example of how to unite these. So I now have first and last name only. What if that was your data set to begin with? Well, let's go ahead and unite them back. So we separated them, let's just reunite them. So let's set, let's reset people to is equal to the people two data set. So people two is already, well, let's not confuse ourselves and we'll say people three. We're gonna take in the people two data and I'm gonna pipe that into the unite function. What am I uniting? Um, we would say unite. How does unite work? Let's see. Hit tab, data equals, column equals, the name of the new column as a string or a symbol. So we could say column equals, and I'll say full name, right? And now I want to take in the column called first and last. And we will say, you can also put a separate in there. So sep equals. Now when you unite them, you can unite them with nothing. You can unite them with a space. You can do whatever you want. We want a space in there, right? Sorry, this is from memory. I haven't used this in a while, but let's click on that. People three. People three is full name. Mark Gingrass, Dave Smith, Jackie Doe. We could have had a separator. If we didn't put a separator, it would have probably defaulted to an underscore. Let's double check. People three equals the people two data united first and last name called full names. People three, yeah, so it defaults to a underscore. But we didn't want that, we wanted control Z, separated equals a space, and that's how you unite. So I hope you understood that. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a hypothetical example here, but I hope that this kind of makes it so that if you break something with separate, you can reunite them with unite, or if your data comes in, not, not together, you can put them together. So. Anyways, I hope that this helped a little bit more and you can tidy your data just a little bit better. And again, I'm not a professional. I am not a computer scientist. I am not a instructor. So please do your homework and just use this as a reference. The real deal is out there somewhere, but I am just a stepping stone to get there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Test, test, test. Does the microphone work? Hope so, because we're about to record this video.